Good afternoon, welcome back to uh, Arco. The worst of the heat seems to have passed. And the final action of what's been a packed nine days? <laughs> I think. Some days. Ten. Some days uh, is about to come up. Uh, two bouldering finals to bring you. Bouldering uh, for the female juniors and then for the youth amen. So two finals to bring you. They'll run back to back. There will be a short pause between them. I understand we will keep our live stream going during that pause. While the route says, let's just have a little play around with the boulders uh, for the youth amen. And as you can see, the junior women are out first. And uh, they're over on the far right-hand side with a, a, a technical boulder. That little move there leftwards can be done either statically or dynamically. A uh, couple of bits of housekeeping that I've said every time we've come on the stream. The zone signs say bonus for reasons we've speculated on extensively and have... Uh, no real idea. I, I think we've still got a few speculations to come. I think we can we can keep it going. It definitely feels like the scope for a, a Brexit joke or a Trump <laughs> tweet joke, but uh, we'll we'll save them for now. Somewhere in there about trade restrictions. This is awesome start here from Mr. Dorfile. Yeah, it is. Uh, no joke, actually. This last bit, but once you get stood up on the volume, once you got both feet established on the volume, should be pretty straightforward. Lucia Dorfile. Even just uses the left toe hook just to be sure. Finds the top. Yes, sir. Uh, cracking start for her. Flash. Um, yeah, yeah. Didn't, didn't look in trouble at any point on that boulder, I have to say. She no. had slight hesitation at the bottom, but surely with uh, another five climbers still to come, this one's going to see a lot of tops. Yes, uh, Lucille Sorel of France will be out next. Uh, yes, apologies, my housekeeping as Lucille comes out on the stage. The, uh, the zone signs say bonus which is almost certainly due to a G7 uh, conspiracy related to um, trade tariffs and uh, Brexit negotiations uh, or the wrong graphic charter being implemented. Either way, uh, that's one thing to be aware of. And secondly, we do not have a feed for the clock, sadly. That has been the case all week. Um, but we'll try our best to listen out for the beep when there's a minute left and uh, certainly listen out for the beeps when there's five seconds to go. Lucia Sorrell here just uh, made a second attempt at start there, just the first one. So it could be interesting, There's attempts, depending on how hard the rest of the boulders are, attempts could be crucial here, and a little wobble off the mats there, just did lift her second foot off the ground, so it does count as an attempt, so this is her second attempt. Not looking quite as comfortable as Lucia Dorfell uh, on this first move, just really got to stand up on that lower volume. She's really looking for all the different thumb catches and screw holes and all other bits and bobs on that really small thumb catch on that next volume. Now she's stood up into it a bit better now. Be interesting to see if she can reach that good side pull she can from the lower volume. Up and into this top section now. Gone really high feet straight away there. This is Earl. She looks pretty solid on this top section, I have to say. No problem getting the feet up. And uh, we'll bring home a very quick top. I think she's going to be slightly annoyed with herself that she did have that slight false start. Well, I mean, on this boulder, which looks like it will see some tops, it's uh, you can easily find yourself behind all of a sudden just because you needed two, top, uh, two tries to do it. So it's a uh, slight opportunity missed. Yeah, I did just double check the scores, and that is definitely the case. So it was those two, two attempts. First one was just a, you know, just a stand up off the mats, and just didn't quite find the perf <coughs> perfect perfect uh, starting position. <coughs> Here's Oscar Pusic, rearing the correct number for some reason during the semi-finals. She didn't have the right number on. Um, another mystery. So she gets some of this little thumb catch. Got to really push into it and commit to standing on that left leg. Oh, she just tries to jump for it out left. Quite interesting. She went so fast into that side pull. Didn't like the balancing position. Felt like she could just jump for it. Back on for a second go now. 
Nice little starting position there with two of the same holds facing each other. Nice aesthetics from the root setters. The rest of the boulder does seem quite easy after that from the tops we've seen, but Erska's twice now gone for the jump rather than the balance across. Still pretty humid here in Arco, but there's a big storm brewing just uh, over the hills behind the arena, so maybe catch some rain during this. So this venue is in a big temporary structure, so the wall itself will stay dry. Third time, Lucky now goes for the jump across again, almost swung into the set of volumes on the boulder next door. There's no black tape there, so in theory she can use them, even though the root setters have probably deemed that they're not going to be m that much use to her on this boulder. It's quite surprising here from Erzka Rapusic, who thought maybe a little bit of a nervous start. I wonder if she'll try something slightly different now, different method maybe. We've seen both Lucio and Lucia go a lot more statically into the thumb catch, but Erzka's really committing to that jump across. Quite surprising, really, to see some of Erzka's Rupusic's um, obviously talent, but experience as well. It's just not quite found the right method here. Again, looks like she's going to commit to the pounce. She's getting quite close like that. Which the feet are kind of being left behind a little bit. Straight back into that starting position. She's finding that first move really easy now. Wonder if just under a minute to go whether she will try something else does commit to the jump again. She can definitely make it work like that, but uh, whether she have enough time or not, we'll see. She's hitting that left hand screw on, sort of wrap on the side of that volume really at full speed. She's hitting it with a really straight arm. It's not helping her engage that arm at all when she hits it. Now slips. She must be really low on time now. Obviously, we don't have the clocks. So we can't quite tell, but uh, there's the that's a false start anyway. Erska uh, Rapusic goes away. No zone, no top. Worst possible start for the Slovenian. Big surprise not to see a top there, t to be honest, after two relatively easy... Uh, attempts on the boulder, one flash, one second go. Yeah, Camilla Moroni's next out. So yeah, interesting with this uh, boulder. We saw this a little bit earlier on uh, with the Youth A women's final. Um, climbers kind of, couple just absolutely pathing a boulder, and then people were really struggling with it, barely able to do the first move, and it seems that's. Uh, that's what we've got here as well in the juniors. It's, uh, as I say, Camilla Moroni qualified in third place in the semi-final, uh, hence climbs fourth in the final. Choosing to go slowly out to the left. I have to say slow does look the better option, albeit with a bit of a pop. Not quite like that. It looked like she was kind of caught in two minds there. So burning through uh, a couple of attempts here. Well, I have to say, I thought uh, after Lucia Dorfel 
strolled up this route that uh, we would just see top after top after top, probably flashes. You would never challenge. And suddenly, it looks quite a tricky little boulder. She might just have a bit of a rethink here. As you'd expect, Italian crowd giving a big shout out. Can't decide. It seems like she just can't decide quite how to move left and at what speed. See if we can catch a glimpse of that clock. I think that was the beep for a minute. Yeah, pretty sure it was. She's uh, under a minute now. Well, Lucia Dorfel's uh, flash of this first out was uh, looking more and more amazing by the second. It feels like these finals we've seen today have been quite similar in that respect. Climbers either flashing boulders, getting them done quickly, or perhaps not getting them done at all. That will be that. No top for her. What a fascinating first boulder. So we said uh, right at the start, oh, well, this would be a, a procession almost. But, uh, yeah, really interesting. Not sure if uh, Camilla Baroni and Erzka Pusic read the boulder together maybe uh, or, or what it was through that lower section. Let's see what Natalia Grossman can make of this one. Maybe it's this climber's not feeling 100% standing on that left foot on the volume. You can see just in the corner of the shot there. It's not the worst foothold in the world, but it's a pretty decent volume. Let's see what sequence she tries. Lucille Sorrell's attempt on this, effectively a flash, even though you know, she just false started that once. False started, just fell off the starting position, just trying to get into the four starting positions once. Uh, but then as soon as she did pull on, she went straight to the top. So let's see. Tony Grossman has for us. Can she weight that left foot at all? Just look a little bit stretched to standing into that thumb catch, but it, as we've seen before, you just got to commit to standing on the foot. thinks about adjusting the right hand a little bit higher. Does go and try and bump the foot and falls off. First two climbers out. Really, I can see climbers coming back into the ISO area after four minutes of failed attempts. Off to just the most perfect start. time sort of runs into the starting position. Tony Grossman again just does commit to standing into it but again falls. Just as she bounces off that right foot it just seems to be slipping away from her. With such a small number of climbers going through these footholds you wouldn't have thought the conditions have deteriorated instantly like that like that over just a couple of climbers. As she rocks into that she just loses the balance point. Let's 
to see now. So you can just see that left foot moving around the, on the screw on. Natalia Grossman really not happy with that position. You would have bet your bottom dollar after seeing Lucia Dorfel and Lucille Sorrell literally stroll up this boulder that it was one that was going to see a number of tops. With just one minute left, you can hear the buzzer. It's not to be the case so far. Now just trying to crimp the top of that hold with a right hand. That must be a really bad crimp. Must be fingernails down the top of the left hand starting hold there. If she prefers that over the actual pinch itself. Running really short of time. Starting to look frustrated here. Natalia Grossman. She's just going for the full jump, as we saw with Erska Raputic. No top as well. Last climber out, Laura Cora. Super interesting. Scenes here already for the female junior, boulder number one. Two climbers top the boulder. You see a dwarf on top. Take it first go. Lucille Sorrell, second go. And nothing else. No zones, no tops for the further three climbers. One more climber on the boulder, Laura Cora. Lara Gora has already won the, the uh, lead title. What can she do on the boulder? This boulder is not uh, going as we planned. First climber walks out and strolls up it. You can't help but think, yeah, undercooked that a bit. Uh, it's not proved to be the case at all. So, Lara Gora, who looked the strongest climber in the semi final, if she would like to progress onto boulder two. In the lead, needs to flash this. If she can't flash it, then Lucia Dorfel, who climbed first, having qualified sixth for this final, uh, will be in the lead after one boulder. I see Laura Gora working hard, I suspect. Uh, backstage, she probably was well aware that Lucia Dorfel flashed it just from the speed and therefore knows she needs to do the same if she wants to keep pace. Remember, if it, in the unlikely event it did come down to count back, it would be Laura Gora who won the title. So, uh, because she was higher ranked in the previous round. Uh, and it will mean that if she manages to flash this boulder, she'll go on to boulder two in the lead, which psychologically does make life a little bit easier. Even if, as I say, it's quite rare that we need count back in uh, boulder. Able to kind of confidently move the feet around there, Laura Rigora. It's really reliant on that right hand, and sadly for her, that's blocking where she wants the left hand to go. And you can see the thought process of, hmm, need to move the right so I could free up the left. That's what we want to see, the climber on the wall. Figures it out in the end, Laura Gora. And I think she is seconds away from a perfect start in the final here. Had to work for that one. Super interesting boulder that really just seemed to come down to how well you can stand on the left foot, the starting left foot pretty much. You, you know, get into starting position, lean that left foot out and just put the weight for it and, and see if you can stand up into that upper section. Super interesting start into this junior category. It really proves that some of these youth climbing competitions, making predictions, really is uh, a waste of time. Uh, yeah, we're pushing straight on with boulder number two. First climber is walking across the stage now, and our first look at this boulder number two. So Lucia Dorfel now uh, gets underway. What a start she had. 
Yeah, she really threw us off the scent of how hard that first bowler had to actually ended up being with the absolute breeze of it. It's like she was just going through a little warm-up routine on that first boulder. Into the second one, though, back to this familiar groove. If you've been following any of the streams over the last few days, there's been a few hearts broken in this corner. Let's see what she can make of this set of sort of confusing volumes with additional blue jibs on it. And a lot of the time in these corners, it's really hard to read a sequence. And during the observation, you can kind of come up with your, what you think may be the best possible outcome of how to get through these weird section of volumes but a lot of time with those climbs it's just about going up there and just trying to get through the individual sequences and, and figuring out on the fly she does just start in this left hand undercut and instantly cross into a right hand just next to it so it's a nice little traverse into the starting move she's just kind of going for the jump into the mantle on her first attempt there's no footholds in that lower wall that's good strength good sh shoulder stability as she pushes into the into the groove now Yes, she's uh, she got off to a flyer here. I may, I will make note. I assume she fell off there. Okay, it's it's slightly unusual shot. Um, I uh, I will make no judgment on the difficulty of the boulder based on what we see from Lucia Dorfo because she absolutely crushed earlier on. Just taking a slight rest. We've seen most climbers in this championship is kind of really rattling through the attempt, as you would expect to see for the younger athletes. They don't really seem to get that tired in between goes, but just taking a good 30 seconds or so there. We see Adorfo. Obviously, after such a great start, that she knows instantly she's in in for a decent shout with this competition if she can just keep it going. This time jumps into that press, it's a really nice move. Looks like in this position previously, she just rolled over to that side pull Gaston with her right hand and lost the body position. So let's see what she tries this time. She's going to have to move a really quick left hand or stab the left foot up somehow. Got to think that flexibility is going to be super important on this boulder. Oh, that's nice, getting the left foot up early. I wonder if she can get the right foot up back behind her hand to join it. Or she's she going to try and press it out from there. That's better, superb route reading there. She knew that she needed the left foot up and got it up early from the lower position before standing up into this. Now she can use that left hand properly. And, oh, bizarrely, she looked in full control and just hit the left hand. And, you know, from that angle, it looked like she just stepped off, but clearly it, it's a little bit steeper than it looks, that section of the wall. And the, the zone hole that's on the far right is just the most awful thumb catch. So that wouldn't have really been offering her anything. And, Interestingly, using that little side pull on the side of the volume that she was going to, it's just tipped her off the wall there. So a little bit of a rethink of the sequence, potentially. But she hasn't got time to really stand there and think about it. Just has to get on and try and feel this one out. Really quickly into that new sequence now with the left foot up first. now squeezes the right foot up before she had her left hand up that's it just getting a tiny bit out of the volume so she's running out of time well I mean hard to know what to make of that one after uh, her frankly outstanding performance on boulder one as I say I pass no comment So Lucille Sorel of France comes out, uh, got the first boulder done on her second attempt. What can she do with this much more burly uh, number two? Yeah, she's just trying the static method of getting her foot up rather than jumping into the press in the corner. S you see how difficult that is going to be to get her right foot up. Now she's just trying to lean away to open the body a bit, leave a bit of space for the foot. That's nice. Just going for a more of a mantle press in the corner. Totally different method here. At some point soon, she'll arrive in the same position as Lucia Dorfel with the left foot up. That's nice. 
So when she brings her left hand up to there, try not to wobble off. You can see the zone hold just above. That's probably control on the zone. Yeah, that's control. Such a bad hold that she's actually not even bothering to use it. She's using the screw placement just above it. You can see her left hand's in the screw holes, plus the right hand is in a screw hole. Now she's got to try and bring the left foot up without wobbling off, just as a go to say that sentence. He does spin out the corner. Just trying to see in the background, 2.15 uh, left on the clock. made to think on this one the climbers that's for sure a pretty long break here let's see uh, what she can figure out this time So she's already been to the zone. Wants more than that this time. I think that is about to be time up. It is. Does not find a way that time. Got her final off to a cracking start. So Uska Rapusic comes back out for number two. Got work to do, Oscar couldn't find a way on the uh, first boulder. back on for another attempt it's uh, quite the contrast this boulder yeah her starting method there is quite interesting as well she's climbing in a really hard way with her hands around the wrong way but now manages to sort it out now going for that sort of drop down method just to open up a bit of space with the right foot a lot of debate about this groove especially th this selection of volumes in the groove for the root setters the last few days just really just wondering how well that the climbers of this age can read into these volume these kind of weird volume boulders and these groove boulders but this is the oldest category so we would have thought 
you know, we see a lot of these climbers, including Ersko, out there in the senior category. I'd have thought that they'll be fine on this style of boulder. It's obviously just a really hard one and a really odd, balancey boulder. Yeah, you'd imagine that uh, climbers of the calibre of Ersko would be able to, to deal with with this type of boulder, as you say, Mike? Yeah, I don't think this one's a root reading uh, problem. It just seems to be really hard balancey kind of volume wrestling in the groove there. Just And that zone little thumb catch is, looks so bad that they really can't get anything out of it at all. Erska was given that the zone on that attempt. Deemed as control, it's such a bad hold that it's not easy to get control out of it. There's that sort of strange starting method that she's going for again. Obviously prefers the hands around that way, ends up just having to match that right hand. sort of dropped me in this groove before back toe hook from the left foot see a really powerful position to go through it like that and you see a door fells method through here it's currently looking like the best where she just jumped into that mantle in the corner but super physical on the shoulders and the triceps let me see it's in that start position again most climbers prefer to have their right hand where she has the left hand just, uh, after the first move Manages to get through it with ease, just adds a little move or two. This time just trying something different, going really front on up the volumes. Avoiding the groove. Can't avoid it for much longer though, she's got to get that right foot back into the corner you would have thought. There's that massive drop knee that she was doing. Dropping the knee, just taking more and more rubber off the contact point of the volume, and she walks away with a zone, but not no top. Not for the first time uh, this week. Brusher's very eager to get on with things. And uh, not for the first time today. We've got a second boulder that isn't quite working out. Yeah, three climbers still to come. Next one is Camilla Moroni. One of three climbers not to find a top on the first boulder, so hopefully she can make amends for that on this second block. There you can see, just trying to figure out what's going to be the better option for pulling on. Ends up doing quite a hard match there. So will she try and jump into this push position or hang low? Kind of preferring that hang under the second big triangle there. She easily gets up to this position, but it's uh, getting through this into the zone now. That's the real difficulty of this boulder. Just blocks her left hand with the right hand. Got a little bit greedy on that Gaston. Block the best bit that she just needs to shuffle up that next side pull a little bit. gets that right hand Let's see if she's left a little bit of room this time looks like she's going to try and cross over top no it does bump it up a little bit higher 
really trying to get something out of that left foot, smearing so hard on the wall to try and get the stand up. Now she's committed to the heel, though, has got to try and get that right heel stood into her toe to try and get the height down into the zone. Frustration raining here. And I can see why. She'll have another go, of course. Plenty of time left, so why not? you'd expect a uh, crowd getting very into this yeah this time she just got that hand sequence uh, around the most efficient way at the bottom obviously a couple of climbers now not enjoying that first little undercut left hand it just gets through it cleanly slightly better position now that really tough to Get into drop knee on the right knee, manages to stand up out of it now and gets the zone hold importantly. Could be crucial that zone. It's just absolutely nothing for the right foot or the right hand, which means getting that left foot up is absolutely desperate. It's such a cryptic body position. You feel like you could stand there all day, but moving that left foot up seems virtually impossible. She's going to be heading back to the isolation zone and let's see what Natalia Grossman can make of this boulder. Yeah, as we said, this is uh, really, once again, a boulder that I suspect the root setters might not be over the moon with. Not quite been figured out by anyone uh, just yet. Natalia Grossman. The next climber to try her luck. Also has to work hard through that second left volume, the starting position there. The tape is just on the volume itself, so they can use either of those two handholds to pull in and establish control in the starting position. And she's allowed to feel all of those holds. Yeah, really, it's interesting actually. The, the, the first climber out, Lucia Dorfel, really just was quite happy on that undercut left hand. Uh, Lucille Sorrell seemed to be as well, but a couple of climbers since then, just really not completely comfortable with it. Now it's a strange boulder this. Really, really funny one. Technical um, groove climbing. Yeah. Pretty old school style. Technical groove climbing mixed with some really powerful pushes and pulls. So, uh, slightly uncomfortable looking use of her left leg, almost behind her head there. Tyler yeah. Grossman just tries to stretch up to the left hand side, well, that would be a really good position if she could reach it, but I think the Ritzhouse have measured that one quite well, and this is what we saw from Lucia Dorfel, both feet up high on the volume. Now, can she try and stop the rotation off the wall out of the groove now she's got that left hand? It's all about getting the left foot up next. Super stretched in that position there. As soon as she brings the right hand out, goes up into this groove, the body position seems really odd and you can't quite control either a foot match or a left foot up. Looks like she's gonna try and match the feet and bring the left foot up. That's nice, but she's really stretched. Oh, the left hand has come back down now. Oh, that's nice. This is the best position we've seen on this boulder now. Natalia Grossman could be in a really good position here. Didn't 
find anything on ball to one. It's now it's just a complete launch for the finish hold, you would have thought, unless she can push it out in the groove. It's a good jug up there, but it's in a Gaston kind of angle. Now she just pushes it out. Will she better reach it from there? It doesn't look like she can. What a massive result this would be for Natalia Grossman if she could find a way. The one minute beep just sounds she's looking really uncomfortable up there. I think she's just figured out what she needs to do. Got to wait the foot and then give it the Hollywood jump to the last hold. Now pushes right into the groove and jumps for it and oh. falls. Massive helicopter swing off the top. That's going to be tough because she's going to be really short on time with this one. Never looked like she had quite the spring out the corner off that bad left foot. Instantly pulls back on. So Natalia Grossman gets comfortably the closest of anyone we've seen. Here's where she went for it. And I think if the left hand had been a little bit further left, might have made room for the right. Uh, but alas, she does not find a top. So Laura Gora now. Final climber out on the second boulder, no tops. Let's see what our Agora can make of it. Oh, completely different method. Good thinking there from our Agora. Effectively skipped a move, or at least made it half a move smaller into that starting position. Climbers can use all four tapes in whatever order they like. So now Agora just uh, having one over the root centers a little bit there. <laughs> making friends and influencing people. I hope you haven't read that book. <laughs> Where do you think I get my charisma from? My effortless charisma and humour. This will be massive here. Massive from Laura Gore. She can find the top here, put herself firmly in first position. Yeah, I mean, she's already, uh, depending on the number of attempts, yeah, she will be in first anyway, just thanks to the zone. But the two tops would just put a off in the distance really I know it's a big if given uh, all that's come before it but uh, still you can see how this is not a boulder you can just read from the ground and figure out what you're going to then just dispatch it you've really got to go up there and figure out the body position try and learn exactly what your body and its sense of gravity is telling you in between every single hold here. She really wants to release that right foot, but just needs to get some opposition or something in the right hand. There you go, palm down with the right hand. Laura Agora should have found herself established on this top move now. Just pushes into that top foot. Oh, she's really good on the feet. So can Laura Agora get herself close to this top move? Look how small she is compared to the size of that move. Needs to decide when exactly to release and move out left and go for this top hold. She's just tweaking that right foot just to see if she can match fit. She's just going to jump for it. She does jump for it and gets it done. Now Rigora flashes a boulder that nobody else could top. Laura Rigora takes control of this final as if she wasn't already in control. Fabulous stuff from Laura Rigora. Firmly into first position with two flashes on the board already. This is that top move. At this stage, she realised what she had to do. Just bent the left knee very slightly and has sprung out the corner to spring from almost a straight leg like that. It's seriously impressive. Such leg strength. There you can see the left leg just recoils it slightly, pounces for that top hole, hit it double straight arms. Great job. <laughs> Fabulous stuff from Laura Gora, no doubt who's in control here. Local MC getting everybody to show the heart symbol there for Laura Agora. 
not sure if some of the other non-Italian teams were probably uh, participating there. <laughs> Eddie Falk was on the mat to get the, uh, get the shot though. Eddie actually took a wonderful photo of a snake earlier uh, in the local river here. Charlie Bosco's favourite animal. Yeah, he, f he was taking some pictures of uh, hanging out with the athletes down at the river and uh, yeah, saw a snake catching a fish. When he described to me in a nice thick New Zealand accent, it really did did, did sound good. Straight on with the third boulder. I see Adorfel's been going really well here today. Currently sitting in second place. Behind Laura Agora, who we just seen top boulder number two, the only top on that one. Into an, another kind of sequency, confusing boulder. Far left hand side of the wall now. And the, these fiberglasses pushing out of the groove and up up the wall. It's a vertical panel. Yeah, you can see the boulder. I right, can see most of the boulder actually. You can't see it. there's a big white obstruction in the left corner that's blocking uh, the left side of the bottom. I can't quite see the top from that angle, but you see a pulls on it anyway. jumps out to the zone hold it's a good sloping dish in the middle of the ball there We've seen that volume used a couple of times in this championships already good effort from the camera team down there just racing to the uh, next camera to spike them into into the uh, correct position that we need to see this full bold up pushing and palming out of this groove. Going to lean out the corner, Potent potentially as we saw from the Seadolfo before, just pounce towards the zone hold in the middle of the wall. Sia pulls on and just tries to jump straight to the zone hold that time. Not quite enjoying this press out of the corner. Hopefully we better maybe stick with that shot so we can see exactly the move out of this groove here. Rutet has put a really technical challenge on so far. All three climbs have involved some sort of groove or angle change. Lucia Dorfel getting lots of support from the local crowd. <laughs> Nicely done there into the zone hold this time. First time established up into the zone. Oh, just comes up short on flipping that press volume into an undercut. Right on the buzzer there, we see Adolfo managed to establish on the zone, which could be important. I don't think anyone would accuse these route setters of um, not providing a challenge. A zone on the 6th for 10th there. If this one does come down to attempts, it's, uh, yeah, it's a big pile of attempts there to find the zone. The buzzer sounds, you see 
Sorero is off and running on bowler number three. Second climber of six in this female junior final to attempt this third boulder. It's the male youth A boulder final to come after a short break after this one. There you can see the full boulder. Lucille Sorrell is so confident on her feet. She's got stood up really high here from this position. She may be able to reach and lean over into that zone hold. Nicely done. The zone controlled on the first attempt here for Lucille Sorrell. Now just tries to pedal the feet. Oh, nice power punch up to that next left volume. It's a really sloping volume. So can she just, has she seen it, the drop down potentially on the underside of that right hand volume? There you can see it. it's quite good on the underside, but le look how bad that left handed. Oh, good effort. See, she was starting to strain. She was just starting to feel that on those two volumes there. I think skin conditions are going to be vital in this boulder. Luckily, the temperatures massively dropped here in Arco. We've got a perfect climbing conditions to finish this championships. Yeah, it's, it's a relief, actually, <laughs> and, and not just for the climbers. It's been super hot at times today. Lucille Sorel uh, giving the, the boulder a little brush. And she uh, got, the s got the first boulder on her second go and then flashed the zone on boulder two, one of only two climbers to flash the zone. Okay, here she goes again. She was really good through this section before. That was the exact same sequence she used before, but as of many times with super body tension moves, it's in the case of first go, best go a little bit for her there. It was a really techy way of doing it, really putting power through those bad feet. straight up to that higher volume and pushes through that with the right toe. Such a nice method. Yeah, it's nice to watch. Pops out to the zone, holds the swing. Now uses a slightly different sequence, uses that lower right screw on before pouncing up left and you see how hard she hits the hold. So flash the zone once again. Got the zone on her second go on the first boulder and turned that into a top and then got it first go on the other two boulders. But she needs a top here. Laura Gore has already got two tops. So Lucille Sorel is sitting in a precarious third place right now. So she's able to hold that swing pretty consistently. Probably not the most sympathetic of moves um, when you've got bad skin. Uh, just cannot figure out a way to get that left hand to land. And four minutes is up for her. Erska Rupusic, then the only Slovenian in this final, will be next. Currently lagging behind where she would expect to be in fourth position with uh, just one top in two attempts. sequence she prefers such a static and uh, steady technique that she really focuses on every individual move you can see her really calculating every different body position this is what we saw from the seal Sorrell then just pushing up into that groove to start with before getting the lean across we also try and go slowly just as you bring the right hand through oh that's nice good shoulder strength drops down into the zone hold really pretty hard
Like different foot sequence here. Just needs that right toe up a bit higher. I think it's just a slight, yeah, you can see just shaking the head there, slight uh, method error at the bottom of the ball there, just started off the wrong foot. This time gets it sorted, left foot on the middle of those three triangles, just trying to heel hook this time as well. So just playing with the methods a little bit, now brings that right toe in. Looks like she's just trying to lean out to that zone hold from a lower position rather than jumping across to it. Doubles again, a bit too much speed out of the corner. I can kind of see where the root setters are going with this one, but it's just, right now the climbers just aren't quite figuring it out. Yeah, three climbers still to come. Really good hard round of boulders here for the female junior final. Seems to be caught in two minds between using that right foot screw and on that or the right heel. Uh, she does get the zone. That could be important with one just under one minute to go. Now controls the swing really carefully, just watching her left leg on the outside edge of the wall there. Will she put her right foot really high? Does. We thought that Root sets have put on that little jib for a reason though. She's doing well here, Uska Rapusic. Yeah, looking good on that left hand volume. If this final carries on like it is, it could be anyone's, especially if Oskar Rapusic could find a big result here. Just trying to leave herself up to get a left foot to match the right foot there. You can see it's an undercut finishing hold. Just tries to pull up into it. Just shake it ahead like, what are we supposed to do here? She walks away very, very unhappy. She's just lost it a little bit here, Oskar. Yeah, I can see why. That is frustrating. Camilla Maroney now, uh, fourth climber out. Four minutes begins, you can hear the beep in the background. She'll get underway. Confident start on what is a tricky boulder. So she's got herself stood up uses that the lower right hand to stop the swing the fact that these boulders are stopping the climbers as they are means that the final could be wide open if someone could just find that moment of inspiration and Camilla Maroney trying to put herself in position to do so there's a little screw on jib on top of that volume that she's heading for there it is she finds a top on number three out of nowhere Absolutely extraordinary top. Importantly, she used that lower right foot below that cluster of three volumes. Then she put her left foot up, so she had the foot sequences perfect on a powerful boulder. Sometimes it's hard to concentrate on the feet, but she got the foot sequences perfect. And then out of nowhere, that top, like you said, Charlie, just stood up into that top hold, snared it with one hand, at which point I swear she was going to fall off and just reeled it in, matched it up, and uh, superb job.
Natalia Grossman's coming out next. And Camille Maroney, after not finding anything on the first two boulders, moves herself up into fourth place. Natalia Grossman really needs something here. She wants to come back into contention in this competition. Natalia Grossman safely across to the zone. Camilla Moroni with that extraordinary top. Actually only moved her up to fourth because she couldn't find anything on the first boulder and then uh, couldn't top the second either. Here goes Natalia Grossman lining it up. And she finds a top as well. They're oh, Mike, I don't know what to make of these boulder finals. It seems to be exactly as it was earlier on where boulders look impossible and they get topped or they get topped and then look impossible yeah it's quite strange normally expecting a boulder finals the first climber come out or, or whatever order it tends to be in it's a little bit of progress a little bit of progress someone does really well then it goes back and then all of a sudden you know the boulder starts to open up but this one is absolutely all over the place where you can even just can't touch it or you can just blast through the boulder with relative ease it's yeah it's quite a fascinating final so far So Laura Gora will know full well that this boulder is toppable. It's been topped twice. Can she make it three? Now, of course, slightly different style that maybe you could argue is a pre non preferred style and a bit more volume based, big slopers, but certainly wouldn't bet against Laura Gora on this one. No, and if she gets it done, she'll be the w youth world champion. She'll have done the double because uh, nobody else has more than one top, she has two. If she gets this done, she'll have three and nobody will be able to catch her. Just looking to put her left foot up early there, but now she realizes she's got to kind of go low underneath that lower volume now, pounces in the match into the zone. Fantastic static strength to be able to leave her out with your left arm bent like that. Slaps with the right hand. Laura Gorat can seal the double. Youth World Champion in lead and Youth World Champion in boulder. If she can do this last move, you can see the screw on hold on top of the little volume, inching her way up. Left hand lands and the right hand lands and Laura Gora has done it in front of her home country. She has won the double, she won the lead. Now she wins the boulder. She has been in a class of her own today. She's topped all three boulders so far in this final and nobody was even close to doing number two. Superb effort from Laura Gore. She really has been the standout athlete on these boulders and the way that she went through that section of volumes, like you said, super static strength, just rinsing those volumes, made them look like jugs and that top move, the way she just pressed that out was something extraordinary. What about the leg power that she had there? And there you can see it, Laura Gore, three section of golden boxes. She is gonna win this competition. And now it's just a battle for those other medal positions. But Laura Cora, tip of your hat, one boulder to go. It's already done. Yeah, she flashed two of them and got the other one on a second attempt. Breathtaking. Yeah, you thought, really, it was just a slight stutter at the start of the third one as well. She could have flashed that one as well. The wind's been taken out of this lady's sails a little bit, though, for Lucia Dorfell, but a world championship silver or bronze medal should not be sniff that this is a opportunity still here for Lucia on to bowler number four this four black fiberglass volumes in a row and this starting big box for the feet sloping rails it's kind of a shuffle fest through the first move maintaining that left toe hook before the big release outright there it is into a nice set of double Gastons classic move that now you see that quite a bit, the sort of toe catch release as you swing off, hold the swing on the shoulders.
pulls on for a second go here. One top and three zone so far for Lucia. There's that powerful swing into the double shoulders. Just caught a glimpse there of the full boulder as the brushes move in. Yeah, I think it's four volumes all the same on for the hands through this first move. All at slightly different angles. Aesthetic line to finish from the root setters. Boulders have been hard, but they certainly haven't been too hard for Laura Agora. This time, what can she make of this jump? Ah, oh, super strong. Doesn't quite hold the rotation as a look at her skin. That definitely burns when you come off there. Fourth and final boulder here then in the female junior category. Sia Dorfell, probably a fourth attempt of this move already. Quickly through, two go again. Now hits that far right handle really low that time. Yeah, right, far right volume might be slightly different to those other three actually. Not quite got the same lip on it. Can see there, sloping volume on that first line of four. Troubles certainly aren't over after that as well. Most of the competition here has finished with the fourth boulder being in the middle of the wall. Big show to finish hopefully. Oh, this time holds it. Superb effort. Big battle here for Lucia Dorfell. She's not going to let this competition go without giving it absolutely everything. 30 seconds left. going to have to be quick here. Let's see if she was awarded the zone for that. She was in the sixth attempt and that does end surely. Oh, she's going for one more go. No, she's not. She can't. Five seconds left. Let's see if fell then. Currently in second place as she ends her World Youth Championships. Will she be surpassed? Lucille Sorel then, representing France, does come next. Currently sitting in the bronze medal position, but could easily make it a silver. She just needs a zone to make it silver. I say just, it's certainly not easy to get there. Got to release that toe catch pounce. She had to go one, two, three, just a being a little bit shorter than Lucia Dorfell. As she hit that furthest of the three identical volumes in a line there, she was obviously became a bit overstretched on the toe and had to kind of move quite quick with the hands. I have to say I've been absolutely stunned by the quality of moves that have gone down in this championships. So many coordination moves, really complex sequences. Future of climbing is super positive right now. Not only do we have the Olympics, we've got athletes all the way through from youth B, A and junior category here have really put on a staggering show on some quite ridiculous moves at times.
work really hard on this lower sequence, just being that a little bit shorter. And let's see if she can find herself a silver medal here and get that zone. You can see how quick she's having to move. Can't control that third volume with both hands before releasing. Either can't reach it or just hasn't tried it like that yet. Decides to give it a brush. It's be interesting to see. Could could she try a static method? It's a, it's a something she's missing. We're led to believe it's it's easiest in inverted commas. Uh, done as a jump. Done as a one two three. Doesn't mean that's how it'll suit everyone. Doesn't mean that's how everyone will, will read it. So it tries to pop across one, two, out to the right. We are about to catch a glimpse of the clock there. The elusive clock. You can see there, 52 seconds left. Again, Astra Clean, I think she knows really time-wise this is uh, only her heading for the zone at best. Unless she can really blow our minds. <laughs> I think that uh, the body language tells the story there. So she cannot find anything. She hangs on to third place for now. The first place is already sewn up. Laura Gora is uncatchable. Here's Uska Rapusic of uh, Slovenia. Two zones so far, but no top. She was really shaking her head as she walked off from the previous boulder. I think she's not too happy with her performance tonight so far. Maybe she can make amends on this boulder. Try something. Looks like she's going to try something slightly different. Looks like she's going to go feet first there for a second. You can see how much taller she is than the Seal Sorrel there. Managing to match that with the toe hook still in. Bit of a smile on the face now. Now she gets to try hard on the boulder. Very politely asking for a brush there. Would you mind terribly? I like the people who mind like, get off the floor, get that brush now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jakob Schubert seems to be a man where you would never be in any doubt whether you were acquired as a brusher <laughs> when he's done with the boulder. So Uska now having another attempt. Nice shuffle across those volumes. You can see she reaches all the way to that fourth and final volume and then takes the swing. Remember there was a British climber once, uh, Mark Croxall, yeah, long since retired, but he, were, yeah, he, w he won a Boulder World Cup once, but he was very renowned for absolutely losing his rag on the wall, but then turned around very politely to ask for a brush. <laughs> you wouldn't want to go anywhere near him as he fell off the wall, but then, then always was very polite to the judges and, and the brushes. The red mist only lasted for a few seconds, luckily. There's <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of a few black eyes down the front as the chalk bags would have gone across the arena. There's been a few drivers like that this week, actually, <laughs> here in Italy. Yeah, most of them on mopeds. So, Uska lining up another go. Nobody really made much of it. A bash at this boulder yet. Ooh, holds the swing nicely. Yeah, that's better. Really committed to jumping into that swing this time. Goes for a really high left foot. 
Should be the zone secured for Urska. Can she finish this competition on a bit of a high here? Oh, popped up again. Only seems like yesterday. It was actually about 10 days ago we were watching her in the uh, combined competition in Hachiyoji. Here she is in Arco with 110 left on the clock. Yeah, just the way that she is just shaking her head. Do you think this bowling final was a bit of a knock to her confidence after doing so well over there? Yeah, it really did go well in uh, Hachiyoji, but she's going to finish sixth here if she can't find at least the top. I mean, to uh, the top, excuse me. To be fair, to go from Japan straight to here to Arco to compete is, is a pretty stellar effort just to even have the energy to start the competition. So she's up to the zone. Really needs to make this one count. Won't have time for another go. Is solid with the left hand. Top would move her up, uh, probably into fourth, depending on attempts. Having to fight so hard. Now seems to have found the body position. Oh, and loses it just as the beeps begin to say there's only five seconds left. Not today for Urska. Just not worked out today. Let's have another look at the uh, jump out. Camilla Moroni now found a top on number three. If she can find a top here, she'll move into second. Italy 1 and 2 would be a pretty nice result for the home country. Camille Maroney getting the big support from the crowd. They're certainly not going anywhere here. Big effort there, couldn't have given that much more. Got the Arco Rockmaster Jewel if you're in the area tonight and want to come down and see that starts at 10 p.m. The finals for the Rockmaster. That's not an IFC event, that's just an Arco Rockmaster event. Speed lead climbing, always fascinating to watch men's and women's competition. Big names out on the stage tonight. Adam Andre, Jakob Schubert in the men's competition. Anna Schubert, had a chat with her yesterday. She'll be competing again tonight. This time, can she hold the swing? Super physical move here, gets it done. Leaving everything on the wall here. Gimme Moroni. One minute, 50 seconds left then. Gets the swing done again. Really putting in a huge battle here. She wants that silver medal. finger just drops onto that scroll now just drops off again can she find the feet pushing over to this next hold just rolls over to it the right hand just tries to hold it as a thumb catch a 
one minute left then. Giving us absolutely everything, breathing hard. This time, can she repeat this for a fourth time, this release? Oh, so close this time. No matter how hard the local MC tries to get her going, surely running out of energy now. Uh, yeah, she is out of energy, sadly. With a low scoring round like this, it really just leaves the door open for pretty much everybody. These last couple of climbers, bar Laura Gura, who's already won, just to take away a silver medal here. So Natalia Grossman, currently in fifth place, a top would move her up into second. So this is for a place on the podium. Right now, it would be an all-European podium. Laura Gora is going to win, but Lucia Dorfel would take second. Lucille Sorel would take third. But can Natalia Grossman find something on this fourth boulder? Quite a lot of strapping on that right arm. I thought this is pretty physical in the right shoulder, this swing. Right hand Gaston as the final of those four volumes in a line. She goes, bumps out, one, two, and then we'll have to commit. Holds the swing nicely. It's really well to bring the feet in there on the back screen. Just pushes out that right hand as a mantle looks really uncomfortable in that position at the moment. Got to fight for this next undercut. Does fight for it and gets it well. That's superb effort. Silver medal is on the line here. Still Sandy Grossman fighting. Penultimate volume now. If she can find the top, she would claim the silver medal on what has looked a savagely hard bowler. She's got the top with one hand. Remember, she's got to get it with two and be in control. Silver medal on the line for the United States. Here. Natalia Grossman lands with one hand, still trying to figure out what to do with the feet, and now finds a way with the second hand. She's done it. She has found her way from fifth to second on one boulder. Fantastic performance from Natalia Grossman. The United States have had a brilliant Youth World Championships here in Arco. And as she clutches that sore right elbow, she knows that all she needs to do tomorrow is use it to eat gelato. It is in the bag. Superb fight on a boulder. It proves it's not over till it's over on the fourth boulder. Leave it absolutely everything. A couple of times she was really low on the holds and had to pull so hard to get up and established. Final climber out, Lara Gora, already crowned the world champion. Under what she will do on this boulder, might as well, might as well just stand on the mat and do cartwheels. She's already won. Double. That is something else to win the double. Let's see if she can go out and really prove her dominance here, Laura Gora. It's going to be a super hard boulder for her, considering how short she is. We said that earlier in the competition as well, and she yeah, absolutely exactly. bossed those. I learnt my lesson there, that's for sure. Party has started here from the DJ's point of view. He's yeah. absolutely loving the fact that the Italian has just become a double world champion, and, and why not? Big, decent crowd here. They're enjoying themselves final evening in Arco of what has been a fabulous World Championships. I have to say, if you own property within a couple of square miles of this arena, you probably want to take this week off if you don't enjoy climbing. There you can see the crowd are absolutely packed here for this female junior final. They've certainly enjoyed Laura Gora's win. Still clapping to the beats.
So Laura Rigora got nothing to prove, nothing to win, but she wants to boulder anyway. Four tops really would hammer it home. It's one thing to win, but four would uh, show that she was absolutely dominant. And I think uh, a slightly awkward looking faller. Anytime you land on a straight leg, it's uh, slightly nerve wracking. Yeah, you have to say when you've already won, you know, your, your ability level seemingly drops off the cliff a little bit. You know, it's just you don't have the same fire as if uh, you needed to win on this boulder. You know, surely if she needed to win, she could have done this one. But she's already won. She just needs to go and try something a bit different. Just don't embarrass herself out there and just go, <laughs> just go and have, give it half effort and just wait for the applause after this next one minute, 42 seconds ends. Yeah, we've seen this a couple of times where boulder finals are decided before the climber gets on the last boulder and it's always a bit tricky to know what to do for everyone really I mean what Laura Gora really wants to do is uh, jump in the crowd I'd imagine and get hugged and patted on the back by all her teammates but instead she's got to try and climb Certainly giving it pretty much everything out there on the mats. There's a lot of respect here for Laura Goros for the brush. Vamos is the... Uh, MC as she goes again and she cannot hold the swing, lands flat on her back and I think that will be the end of that. No, it won't. God, you thought whacking the floor like that, you'd think, right, I've had enough of this. Not a bit of it. Laura Gora is going to have another go. 15 seconds to go. Takes another fall on her back and this really will be the end. Laura Gora knew before she even walked on the stage that she'd won the competition. She is the youth world champion in lead. She is now the youth world champion in Boulder. What a fabulous week for her. Crowd applaud in unison. We've got a decent crowd this time as well. Uh, people beginning to turn out a little more in the afternoons, it would seem. Uh, but this afternoon, all about Laura Gore. Natalia Grossman, fantastic effort. The only person to top, uh, oh, sorry, found a top on the uh, last boulder, and it was enough to move her into second place. And Lucia Dorfel, who got off to a great start on boulder one, uh, makes her way onto the podium as well, thanks to that. And uh, Lucille Sorel, Camilla Moroni, they all had their moments, and Uska Rapusic just, just felt, just didn't get on with the boulders today. She ends up down in sixth place. So that's uh, all for now from Mike and I. Remember, the last action of this Arco Youth World Championships is coming up, though, Youth Amen shortly. We will uh, stay live. Go and grab a bite to eat, little drink, and keep your ear out, and I'll give you a shout when we're back.
Hello, welcome back to Arco. Final action of this Youth World Championship here in the Trentino region of Italy. And it's male youth A bowler. Three Japanese climbers, a Brit, a Frenchman, and a Spaniard as well. Hajimi Takeda will be first out, then Hamish MacArthur, who's fifth in the lead early this week. Our Yurakusa, Pogemt, Alberto Hinas Lopez, and Ray Kawamata. I have to say, I hope the Brit says I set some hard boulders here because that's six very strong young lads who have put on some great performances this World Championships already. Super excited for this final boulder of the championships. And uh, yeah, the, uh, the emotions were running high here in the last five minutes as Laura Gora, a little bit of recession uh, through the Italian supporters and uh, through the officials and everything. And it was absolutely brilliant. Yeah, the DJ kept it pumping. So of course. <laughs> as always. Well, it's been absolutely it's how he rolls. Absolutely splendid scene here. And it's nice in many ways that to finish this championships, um, the temperature has just dropped down a little bit and we're... Uh, yeah, in for really good conditions for these young lads and uh, you can see them just on the stage there just making their final boulder observation before heading back to the isolation zone and we get this competition underway. Yeah, they're just doing their observation. It, it's the same as the World Cup World Championship. They get two minutes per boulder to observe uh, en masse. Crowd's still not quite sure what to make of... Uh, Allow Rigora's double. So I think the uh, that is observation on all four boulders done. Uh, good job by the root setters to get the boulders up. Did they have five minutes? Yeah, they had to. Um uh, well, how do I describe it? Sort of rearrange some puzzles that they had made. They didn't want to make it obvious uh, to the people in the crowd what the boulders were for this evening's final, final, final. Um, so they just sort of had things slightly rearranged on the wall and they just uh, quickly run on the mats and shuffled everything around. It's been very intense for the routes. That's 96 boulders in total that they've put up for this championships. Been here for weeks on end. I'm sure they'll be looking forward to their beds at home over the next couple of nights yeah apparently they've been setting since we went to Tokyo and that does feel like a while ago a lifetime ago seen so much climbing since then Oh, Mike, that feels like a big moment. The man with the sign that says isolation zone has just walked past oh, us. Emotional. <laughs> it's getting emotional here. I'm pack it up already. I don't really remember what I used to do, actually, before uh, August got underway. What did I... <laughs> I assume I filled my days somehow, but... It's been a, it's been a three-week live streaming stint. I've sort of forgotten pre-live pre stream life. <laughs> yeah, it's been a... Fabulous month of competition climbing back to back world championships for the seniors, now the juniors. I'm sure, all the fans at home will be crying out for some streaming next week, but sadly, we're going to have to wait. Next IFSC action is Kran. European Championships in Rafo, which I uh, believe is being streamed by a local team there. Uh, Start of October. Hope you've got your down jacket. Hajime Takeda now comes out, first climber out here in this Youth A Boulder final, the final final of the final day of the final event of <laughs> August. <laughs> Final couple of mosquito bites as well, just to finish yourselves off it. It's savage this week. It's only marginally better to smell of mosquito repellent, but it is, 
It is just better. Just pulling into that start position. The spotlights are on here as well for this final round of climbing. Yeah, they'd like to get the lights on very early here. Burn a bit more electricity while we're at it. It does make the, look, the wall look pretty cool. Bruce has put a lot of work into making these boulders look good, so certainly don't want to see them in sort of half cast light. Now he gets into that starting position. See, it's pretty much volume only base climb. The first two triangles, that one's right in front of his face, and the other one just where his left hand is, do have sort of undercut fun, dual, catch, dual texture thumb catches on. It's a very committing last move. It could potentially be a bit of a quick one two to the finish on last hold. It's pretty good. There you can see there's left hand. Now he goes yeah. for it. Just wheel spins off with the right hand. Oh, it might have been the left hand there actually. Asked for the brushes to come in. Wow, oh, what a mess he's made there. <laughs> good to see <laughs> Reusing though. Expensive stuff, chalk. Yeah, those screw on holds are particularly poor. It's like a like a piece of rice, but only only about a third of one. It's that shape. It's just nothing positive. It's slightly slippery. Far from ideal. But that's what he's got to go for. We saw these volumes actually earlier on this morning. The climbers are really struggling on them. I do you wonder if this this brand in particular, the, the, the texture of is it slightly smoother or less slippery or more slippery or whatever it is? It's just not quite working for the climbers. Either that or just the, the dust that's been picked up on the mats is, uh, you know, it's just affecting the conditions on the bottom of the shoes and the, the palms of the climbers. So there's been a fair amount of slipping and greasing going on these on these volumes. So the root set is filling in uh, a lot of the screw holes just before we got started here. They're obviously worried about the climbers managing to get something out of the sort of pea-sized hole. Um, so that, as I say, I saw them furiously kind of firing screws into volumes. There, just under 40 seconds now. Ajumi Takeda has had one half decent chuck at the top hold. Yeah, picked up the zone on his second attempt. He's having another go, but uh, he must be very low on time now. Quickly checks the clock. Right foot does just touch that bottom volume. He's going to be out of time now. We think that would be it for him on the first boulder. Swoops the towel in anger. Makes his way off the mats. Just closes his eyes, looks up to the heavens to, as he walks off the mats. Disappointed with that. Here's Hamish MacArthur, second climber to try his luck. Hamish been going uh, good championships here along with all of GB climbing. Emily Phillips was on the podium earlier for the combined, bronze medal for her in the combined. Hamish now looking to take away some silverware at the end of this championships. What can he do on this first boulder? Goes again into the Gaston on the underside of that volume. Absolutely insane position to find himself in, but does make it work. Manages to get the sta stand up done. Hamish turns that left hand into an Unger Kling. Poor wrist must be taking a hammering. You 
You could see the theory. Went up with the right hand. I do wonder if he'll do that sort of first move, standing up in this two undercuts in the same way. Particularly horrendous position to get into. Obviously he wasn't happy with the first one and just stood right up into the next one. First move again, goes in for a pile of liquid chalk here, Hamish. Liquid chalk buried into the palms. It's a very palm heavy bowl of this one. Just sort of wrapping those volumes. Hamish getting pumped now. Nod of the head says, Come on to himself. Just on the shoulder. I'm interested to see if he's kind of questioning his method here. I mean, he instantly asked for the brusher as if to say, if my foot was more solid, I might be away. Yeah, he's got the towel down the front there, but he's not used it on this occasion. So maybe it's not the feet. Now goes into that. Upside down, shoulder press with left gets established into the starting couple of moves here. Now lines up the zone hold. That's that sorted. So he took a few more attempts to get there than uh, Hijime, but he has got the zone now. Hamish S loads the spring, jumps for it, and that top hold is just slanting away slightly. That's the right sequence though. Now it goes for a clean. Hamish is close on this one. Yeah, he just needs to find a way of doing that top move a little more in control. He's really making progress on the boulder. There's again that full extension, Gaston. Quickly into this next position. Now, can he pounce for this top hold? Flips the left hand to an undercut to set the feet. Goes quick. Oh, he had it in both hands. Well, will he will he look back and rue that at the end of today? We shall see. Yeah, slightly outclined the camera uh, operator down the front there. They couldn't keep up with him on that top move. Missed the top hold. Hamish walks away. This bowl is definitely doable, but it's going to be hard. Our Yurikusa now begins uh, his attempt. He'll be moving up into juniors next year. Awful lot of smoke coming from somewhere over there. I think that was actually just his puffer chalk going through oh, the I lights. Thought it was, I thought it was. Uh, <laughs> I was so thinking we're over there. Someone's having a bonfire on the side of the mat all of a sudden. I, I kind of felt like we would have noticed it, given that that's pretty much where we are. Maybe Laura Gora's team sparked the barbie. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Get the barbie on, get a few beers out of the cooler, their, their work's done. Feet just slipping away from him there, absolutely covered in chalk here already. Came out of it all over his head. I'd say the facilities here in the uh, warm-up and isolation zone are, they all record's pretty good, and the uh, athletes have enjoyed the facilities here. They've been making up boulders and flying around quite a bit in the uh, warm-up zone, so it's good to... Arco organisers here put, uh, put on a good isolation and warm-up zone, which is relatively rare, I would say. Looking up to the zone, oh, does well to hold it, kind of flicks the left out, leg out behind. Looks pretty in control here. Oh, you won't get much closer than that. Yeah, that was nice. Didn't bother flipping the left hand back down, as you saw with Hamish, to kind of get the body position right. Just absolutely gassed it for the top. Hit the top pole with one hand and was rotating quite a lot when he hit it and it was certainly moving quick. 
So I wonder if you can just slow that top move down a little bit, just to try and maintain a little bit more control in the legs. Maybe you can get your second hand to match that top hold really quickly. Here he goes up again, again, just uh, fires the left leg out behind him. Went last time and had exactly the same outcome. I wonder if we'll see a couple of guys potentially trying to miss that penultimate volume and just trying to double straight to the top. Obviously, it makes sense to use it to try and propel off it to get a little bit more height to get to the finish hold. But if you're feeling good on that right hand screw, and I do wonder if someone will just try and double straight to the end to try and be in a bit more control with both hands on that top hold. Yoshiyuki Ogata has not taken that hat off since he's arrived in Arco. Anyway, this time he finds the top. Actually, just kind of spun the left hand round just to control the swing. Yeah, just got a little bit of opposition off that penultimate volume by just letting the left hand drag round. Nicely done in the end, just hit that top hole a little bit higher. Legs were a bit further up the wall and it just means he could just, yeah, you can see the legs come right around really high, just that the legs are a bit higher there, it kind of helps you engage the core a little bit more. Paul Zemft will be uh, next climber on the boulder, already been topped, to, took Oya Rakusa uh, five attempts. Paul Zemft on the lightweight end of things we see climbers come out with all sorts of stuff but uh, Paul Jemt uh, very little in the way of kit Now knowing that this bubble has been topped, just over three minutes remaining for him. Does pile on the pressure, of course, when someone tops the boulder. You're out to follow. Hopefully you can follow suit. I always think it's much easier as a competitor to come out onto a boulder knowing that nobody has topped it rather than knowing that somebody has topped it. It really adds a huge element of pressure. I think that's why you see a lot of the competitors with the headphones on just trying to ignore any noises or any distraction as to what's gone before them because they know you can't affect other climbers' results on the, on the boulders. You can only compete against the boulders themselves. And you know, I have to say, in my experience anyway, it's much better to come out knowing the boulder hasn't been done yet. Paul Jemp just not quite finding the right hand sequence through the bottom here, he's really palming up into that first upside down triangle with the red jewel texture on there, not using that right hand volume much yet. He's just, uh, just questioning his foot sequence at the bottom now as well. Gets in your head this boulder. Every time his foot's just pinging off that left foot. Just go in for the brush. If he's got anything to clean his shoes at all down there. It does always surprise me when climbers don't bring out a towel when the mats are in this condition. Impossible not to pick up dust on the bottom of the shoes.
underway again. One of the taller climbers, so getting himself under these volumes might feel a little tricky. But that top move might be all right if we can have a look at it. Beep sounds to say there's uh, one minute left. Because that right hand just needs to adjust it a little bit, and then it's just building up and just goes for it. Right hand does touch the volume. A couple of fingers wrapped over the top, but not quite close enough to find a proper hand hold up there. Thirty-five seconds left. Then needs to pull on and get established on this boulder pretty quickly here, Paul. Yeah, I think he could well get timed out. Again, struggling on that foothold with dirty boots. Does just try and rub the sole of his shoe on his leg, which always seems like a uh, yeah method that doesn't have that much success. There's the clock. So no worries, up to the zone. Oh, just doubles to it. Oh, oh, he had it. The clock was ticking down. If he'd hung on to that, he would have had the top. He had it. <laughs> Can't get much closer than that. No time-wise or, or uh, distance-wise. Alberto Ginez Lopez will be the next climber on the boulders. Good boulder, this. One top so far. Everyone got the zone and different attempts and progress has been made each time. Alberto Inez Lopez then. Already a superstar in the lead climbing game, such a young age made the Chamonix Lead World Cup Finals earlier on in July. Let's see what he can do in the male Youth A Boulder Finals. Easily through that lower section. Already up to the zone. You can see him just questioning what technique is. Just really crushing that hole between the fingers and the palm on the edge of the triangular volume. Now he lines it up. Oh, he just went a bit too quickly, Alberto Hines Lopez. Yeah, it seems really hard to get enough out of that top volume. The, the angle that it's sloping, kind of got to keep keep the feet nice and high as well. Use a little bit of opposition of the feet on the wall. It takes absolutely no break whatsoever and pulls straight back on, Alberto. Obviously likes the look of this boulder. He can definitely sniff a top here. See how bad that left hand is, well, that's why it's not really giving in anything on that jump. Now he lines up the jump again, hits it with two hands pretty cleanly, but just sliding down it. Alberto Hines Lopez, you feel, has these moves sorted now. What he wants is another launch for the top. Yeah, will it be fair time lucky on this top move? Every time he hits that, it looks like he's coming off. He does so well to hold that with the left arm. This time then, can he get it done? Third time lucky for Alberto Hines Lopez. One, two, three, and slides down the volume each and every time. Yeah, I think you're right, Mark. With the exception of that move up to the zone, this one here, he looks solid. And then he's just... ah, Yeah, that's that is about the only one in the lower section of the uh, bowler that's causing problems. 
Yeah, he's really wasting no time in between attempts. He has got less than a minute remaining here, Alberto. Now we know that this boulder has been topped. That quick one, two, three move at the top now. Still has time here, Alberto. But it's got to be get through it probably this attempt. I feel like he's got to pull something pretty special out of the bag here on this attempt and doesn't. Lines it up one more time with just four seconds left. Yeah, he's close again. Yeah, the top on his fifth attempt from Al Yakuza is the one to beat here at the moment. Ray Kawamata, the final climber out on this first boulder. So Ray Kawamata, who is comfortably the best climber in the semi-final yesterday, had to think about that, uh, is out now. Kawamata just fumbling that move up to the zone a little bit. A particularly difficult move. It's hard to control the sort of all different elements of movement between the feet and the hands there with that left thumb just being so poor. You can see the two thumb catches on this volume. Quite a lot of dirt built up on those volumes now. You see his fingers just sliding away a little bit. Now pushed up for it, but he, as he stretches his right heel just lifts off that volume, just over rotates very slightly. We saw the same from Alberto in his Lopez. He managed to control it each time, apart from the final time, at which point he was pretty much out of time. Said the word time there a lot in, in one sentence. That's, that's a record, I reckon. In a short space of time, yeah. <laughs> time to choose a different word, I think. Considering there's no clock, it's quite ironic, really. <laughs> Trying something slightly different through that lower section of volumes here. Ray Kawamata gets the zone now. What can he do on this top move? Lines it up. Tries to go quite slowly towards the top hole with his left foot through. So Ray Kawamata has got a minute and 35 left or he's going to get left behind by our Yurakusa, who found a way on this boulder when nobody else has been able to. He's struggling to get started now. Ray 
Kawa Matalin. What can he do? Can he match his compatriot out? You know, cues a frustration here as he walks off the stage. That does it end the first boulder of this male youth A finals. Well, the maths, uh, happily for us, is pretty straightforward. Aoyara Kusa, the only climber with the top. Hajimi Takeda be the first climber out. Got the zone on the last boulder on his second attempt. Uh, interestingly enough, everyone uh, took different attempts to get the zone, number of attempts to get the zone. Um, of those who couldn't top the boulder. Everybody uh, moves over to get a slightly better view of number two, and that's how they stand right now. Ariyura Kusa uh, leading the way, one top, no one else has managed to get one. Hajimi Takeda now. Time begins over on the far right of the wall. Ever so slightly overhanging here. Yeah, it's probably in the region of 10 degrees overhanging, somewhere between 5 and 10 degrees. Just off this arete, a section of fiberglass volumes, these sort of uh, long pinchy chips volumes that we've seen quite a lot of this week. Oh, right hand just popping off. That's what you call a close up. We haven't quite had a chance to have a full view of this boulder yet. Here we go. You can see up the headboard there, f full selection of fiberglass volumes. Super skin and friction dependent. These climbs, as we've seen all throughout this championship, good conditions here now, though. Spotlights are on, evening is settling in. He's really struggling to get started here. Yellow holds you can see just off to the right hand side of that groove is for a different competition altogether. That was earlier on, so it's around the corner. So we can't use, well, we could use those, but not sure it'll be much use. Yeah, it'd be absolutely <laughs> no use. We're just traversing on a completely different boat. Well, I don't know if you swung the left foot over there, would it? Uh, probably not. That was anyway. nice. Yeah, nicely done. Went super low across that starting left hand hold. Yeah, perhaps. Uh, should have just had a quick smash for the zone there, just to get it on the on the scoreboard. So he did it, as Mike said. That was nice when he did the last move. It's a really awkward move, that, because obviously you've got to prevent your feet from touching down. Yeah, I think the judges will be keeping a close eye on if anybody else decides to go for that sequence. Let's see what this next sequence is, though. It's not often you see that, hugging it like he's... What are those big stones called they're using the strongman? A atlas stones. The atlas stones, that's it. He's hugging an atlas stone. That's nice into the zone now. We just get controls the pair of opposition volumes. There's such a bad set of holes. Just tries to creep the right foot up, just drags it and tries to put it up with a bit of force lands completely straight legged on the mat. I think he's gonna be alright. Big fight. Breathing hard. back on for another go here for Takeda. Just got to watch those feet near the base of the wall. And uh, yeah, the judges 
just pulled him off the wall there. I don't think it was an incorrect start, I think, and uh, calls it a day on that one. He gave that previous go absolutely everything he had. Currently in third position with that zone on the first boulder. We're obviously now on the third boulder. Second. Second boulder. Indeed. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, I'm just pretty sure I'm... I was just testing you there, yeah, Charlie. Yeah, sorry. I'm checking, you know... One of us is going crazy, that's for sure. We have been live streaming what seems to be like three weeks straight. <laughs> but, you know, I was just checking to see if you're still with us. Yeah, I'm still <laughs> here, don't worry. One of my school teachers used to do that, just say a random word in the middle of... Uh, in the lesson, just to check that everybody was still listening, to see who looked up and... See <laughs> and try and figure out why he was saying such a stupid word. Yeah, Mike, Mike! <laughs> he just said his random word. <laughs> Hamish really nicely through that first move. Wrestling these Atlas Stone volumes now. This is again nice hand positions for Hamish just comes up short on that zone. Not happy with the conditions. Gives the shoes a good clean. They always do it funny. It's slightly funny how the climbers clean their boots and then walk straight across the dirt to get back onto the boulder. Sometimes it's a, just kind of little nervous tick, you know, just something just to calm your mind a little bit, just to go through your routine, get your boots sorted. That's nice, that little mantle on the left hand. Amy should go really strong here. Sometimes use a slightly different volume. Cryptic sequence through here. A whole load of fiberglass and wooden volumes all piled together. Yeah, not that way. Tough for a, a, a long limbed climber like Hamish to get all bunched up. Pulls on again, already uh, done these moves before, but needs to get established on them and then move off. Get sorted on the zone this time, it's just trying that same high foot sequence. That we saw from Hajime Takeda, just can't find a method of getting the feet up. Considering his options here, Hamish. So swings his legs through. That looks like the better method, it has to be said. Yeah. Does well to hold on to that. Oh, oh well great to top, that. yes, fantastic top from Hamish MacArthur, super strong. Yeah, that was really cool, I just thought for a second that he might be jumping to that top move too early without bringing his right foot up, and just absolutely pounced on that top hold. A little one-arm lock-off and a pump of the fist before the match as well. Hamish is back in this one. Now, Yarakusa now. Third climber on this second boulder. 
final final of the Arco Youth World Championships. Yurikus are the only climbers to top boulder number one. Yeah, it puts him in a very uh, strong position as well because it means he only needs to mirror what everybody else does from here on out. Again, carries his Atlas stone. I'm glad you reminded me of that, Mike. Don't reckon that fiberglass volume weighs quite as much, but it's yeah, equally hard to pull on. I was going to say, but it does when you're trying to jimmy onto it. Oh, jumps to the top hold easily there. Looked like he was really battling with that sequence down below. As soon as he found the right method, he absolutely path that top section. Yeah, no worries at all there for him. So Paul Jemft will be the next climber onto the wall. Fourth climber onto this boulder. Quite get himself established on that lower section. Al Yurikusa got that boulder done second go. Hamish MacArthur got it done fourth go. A little twitch like we sometimes see from Luz Duard before she sets off. Trying to jump to that. It is a tough way of doing it. <laughs> Mike Langley turned his <laughs> microphone off for that sneeze, but it didn't matter. It came through loud enough that I heard it. Oh, I nearly fell off my chair there. <laughs> Apologise to everybody watching. That's better from Paul. That little cross palm came out of nowhere, that sneeze. Oh, this is nice for Paul. Once climbers get established on this next foot, oh, we've seen two out of two on that top hole. He goes for the really high left foot. Can he control these volumes? He doesn't control the volumes. Tried to lower back down onto them. Opted for the really high left foot rather than the big sort of ledgy chip volume. Just to the left of where he's brushing now. Just running down the clock a little bit here, just trying to give this potentially one really good last go. The one minute buzzer does just sound. I 
There's that sort of little compression into the mantle. But Methody will he try this time? Right hand up does seem like the most sensible and most successful method so far. Where will he put his left foot this time? Now he puts it on the big volume. Right foot places, left foot and right foot places. He's going to jump to the top from here. It's a good top from Paul. Would be kicking himself that he didn't put his left foot down low on the previous effort. If attempts become crucial here, that could be a big deal. So to push himself up into third position. That was a top on his fifth attempt. So Paul finds a top, but wow, he had to work for it. Albert uh, as Lopez then got a, t a zone on his first attempt on the first boulder. Seen a few tops now, this one three tops so far. This is the fifth climber to try the boulder. There's that nice little cut loose. Ops to camps in rather than get the mantle. Alberto's so strong here this week. Superb 2019 he's having already. Looks like he's going to try and go left. Oh, he did well to hang on there. See, most climbers, I wonder if you have a refit now, seeing better, better success going up to the right hand volume. Obviously, we know that just sitting here watching. Alberto's got to figure that out for himself. So he's got to be super careful. Oof. Left heel and right toe nearly touched down. This time it looks like he's going round on the right hand side of this volume. Drops the right knee just to get into the be best position for it. Looking quite comfortable. He's just got to commit to the stand up. It's really underneath that fiberglass volume at the moment. And looks like he's going to try and put his left foot really high. Not happy with either technique here at the moment, Alberto. So he's tried the left side, he's tried the right side. What will he try this time? Looks like he's going back up to the zone with the left first. Just find himself back on the mats. Not ideal here on bowler number two for Alberto. We've seen this a lot though. Persistence is, re is uh, rewarded if you can stick with it. Yeah, it's certainly not immediately obvious that sequence between the yellow and the blue volumes at mid-height there. The right-hand volume is a fair bit higher. And, uh, just looking at it there in the, in the zone, but it does make sense to go up with the right hand first. Judge is pointing out it wasn't the correct starting position. 50 seconds left. If that's what he's got to get. Try and slap with that to up to the left. Oh, feet cut loose. Got so much lock off strength to hold on when the feet cut loose like that. Must be running very low on time now.
Alberto Hines Lopez will not find a way. So where does that leave him? Leaves him well down the order. We've currently got three climbers who find a top. Our Yurikus has found two. Hamish McCarthy has found one. And Paul Jemt has also found one. Can Ray Kawamata find one? He really needs to if he wants to really feature in the business end of this final in a category he dominated up until here. Can't figure out how to hold that swing. He's got three minutes to really get himself back in the game here. Just can't get himself started. It's not quite happening for Ray Kawamata here. He was, I think he was, most people would agree he was the favourite coming into this. Yeah, no top on the first boulder either. Struggling on the zone on this one at the moment. Paul, Ven Paul Jem, Tamish McArthur and Aoyo Kuta all top this boulder. Got a bit of work to do here, Ray. those top three in a great position to going into the third boulder. Yeah, it really does. It could be massive if Ray Kamamata cannot find something. You know, Yorikuza from Japan is the one to beat at the moment with those two tops, only climbing to top boulder number one. Just not finding the way here, Ray. No way for Ray. Oh, dear. <laughs> Took me ages to come up with that. Don't think Shakespeare would be too nervous. <laughs> Pretty sure Shakespeare's dead. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> give you that one. Couldn't think of anyone else. Ah, oh, Ray could be left behind here. Yeah, he looked massively disappointed when he walked away from that first boulder. And again here, struggling. Just tries to double to it. Maybe overthinking this boulder here, Ray Kalmata. Again, just trying to jump into that. Shake of the head again. Head in his hands. Walks away empty-handed. Not even a zone there for Ray Kalmata. Only climbing not to get the zone. It's not good for Ray. Well, it's not really in his hands anymore. That's the problem. He's down in sixth. Would have expected, frankly, to be first. Everybody moves from the right side of the stage off to the left now as we move on to boulder number three. Just two boulders of action left in this Youth World Championships, and there you can see the scores. Yeah, Al Yurikusa leading the way. Two tops for him. Hamish mccarthy has got one. Paul jem has got one. Alberto Hines-Lopez and Hijime Takeda have got two zones and Ray Kawamata 
with one zone work to do. So Hajimi Takeda takes to the stage. Let's have a look at this bold number three then. This is a really interesting one. A bit more funky. We have a full look at the boulder. Try and describe what we've got. Massive sort of starting side pull jug. You can just see there the feet are just tapped on this volume next to it, and then you have to swing it down full circus style onto this next uh, lower triangle before you hold yourself on to the groove there. Uh, jump into a in compression into the groove, or opposition, I should say, rather than compression. Right hand on the starting triangle for the left feet. Swing down, tuck your right hand into there, and the zone is actually really low and left, by which point you have to do a crazy of roll up to the next hole there's a blue edge in the middle of that blue wall there he manages to hold the swing nice first move oh, the, you can almost imagine the sound of shoulder blades popping <laughs> that's something I don't want to imagine this is nice though he's mounted up on the zone now it's certainly not over this boulder though he's got to do a bit of a roll over you can see that blocks Gaston Crimp for his left hand now just trying to shuffle his right hand a little bit to try and find a bit of a better position for it. He's not happy with that right hand position. Because it's right on the corner of that volume, pretty painful position. He's just trying to get it out there and actually trying to smash the right leg all the way over to the starting hold. I think even the coaches were wincing at that one. <laughs> You're trying to do what? <laughs> even Yoshi's, you, Yoshi's uh, flinching. So here he goes again, swing in. <laughs> I thought he was going to hold that on essentially one arm. Yeah, it looked like he, when his feet landed, he got himself really comfortable all of a sudden. Mostly a little bit too comfortable, his feet just greased down the volume. Another one of the Japanese team looking on there. They want to see something impressive here. Podium spot still available, of course. There's that starting position. Just tap those two feet to establish into a start and then drop down. It's a fair way down. Oh, right on the nose of that volume. It's a close to a pretty big shinner there. these moves here you've really got to lead with the hips is swing hard through with the hips take the hands off at the last second and then use that momentum in the hips to flick the upper body through flick the front flick the hips and then oh, it just doesn't quite find the right swing just a little bit of rotation on that swing now he tries to again resets hip kicks off the wall with the left foot kicks the hips across and lands it's a pretty bad foot actually it's a good effort from him to continuously try that move it looks pretty scary as we said I think it's hurt his wrist a little bit there as well We've got about 20 seconds left it's probably not enough time he's going to go anyway I wonder if that was a legal start you can see every time he's greasing down that he's absolutely smashing himself in the corner who's that uh, very strong looking pair <laughs> it's the Schubert's Hannah on the left, Jakob on the right. <laughs> They're on camera. <laughs> They're just trying to figure out where the nearest pizza restaurant is, I think. So do you think Jakob eats pizza? I just always imagine he eats sort of nails. <laughs> <laughs> Hammers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, uh, yeah, just a steady diet of 
industrial equipment. <laughs> Did you see uh, Jakob and Hannah down at the local river bombing it off the bridge to cool themselves down after a lunch time's worth of viewing here at the Narco Stadium? It's good to see them enjoying it. Jakob said he hadn't jumped off that bridge for 10 years. He hadn't. No, it's proving he's still got it. Oh, that's nice for Hamish. Lands both hands on the undercut. And so oh, he just wobbles off. Really confidently through that first move. Yeah, it's been 10 years since Jakob jumped off this bridge. It's about 10 metres high. And they're proving that he's still got it. Olympics or not, he's still going to go for the big bomb off the bridge. Oh, you've got to, haven't you? <laughs> Hamish that time just lets one hand swing and he easily into that groove. Oh, and then again, just... Once he leans over to the zone hold, probably still hasn't secured the zone there. Straight back into it. So confident on the feet there, Hamish. Look at that heel placement on the left foot. Absolutely dialed straight down towards the mat, exactly where you need it to be. Hamish looking really uncomfortable in that groove. Three brushes moving. Plenty of support for these climbers out there. So here he goes. Hamish. It's an unusual start. This one. So he's got no problem getting himself out there. Yeah, he's really not comfortable in that groove. He keeps looking at these fingers as well. I wonder if he's just catching finger in a screw placement or something on the underside of that volume. He's not quite happy with it. Just needs to get into that groove and just relax a little bit. He's clearly quite comfortable in that position, but because he's not going out to that zone hold instantly with the left hand, he's just sort of got to make his way out there a bit more slowly. Now it just takes a moment to relax on the underside of it. And that's the the zone control this time, it's a bit better this time for Hamish. Absolutely miles up to that next hold. Right foot on a little jib there, on the underside of that volume. I wonder if he'll try that sequence again. For we, sure we saw uh, Ajima Takeda getting left foot up first there. Hamish just tried to use that little jib for the right foot. Five seconds left for Hamish to find something. Doing exceptionally well to stop himself under only that triangle. walks away from that one didn't ever really get established with the feet up on that zone hold next climber out let's see what he can make of it El Yaracuza nice little modern swing across the bottom of the wall gets the tail placed properly at the bottom of the wall looks like he's ready it's a swing and Opposition into the corner, left hand out to the zone, right hand into the underside. Hamish with both hands to the underside of that first volume. It's a fair way down there for him. Oh, neat as you like. Nicely done. Nearly cost him his front teeth, but very <laughs> neat. It's definitely a body you want to come out with the gum shield on for this one, I think. <laughs> Full yeah, helmet might be a better idea. Looking really comfortable in this 
position right here. You know, he got that right foot established really well. Gonna, oh, he just jumps up to that crimp with one hand. That was absolutely insane here. Pushing towards the top and easily, surely finds the top. Absolute domination of that boulder out of nowhere. Oh, Yarakusa, that was massive. As shooters and hacker in the background with the, uh, I don't know what to describe that hair colour as, but uh, whatever it is, it's shooter's hair. And uh, shooter celebrating. Not Meg. <laughs> not Meg, yeah. No, that was absolutely brilliant. I wonder if we get to see that again. I was really happy in that jump across into the underside of that volume and then just really easily jimmied up the groove, at which point it looked like he was just going to try and sort his feet, but in the end just jumped for the crimp, caught it with one hand. And at that point there, it was all over. Right, this is crazy. If Paul Jemp can't find a, um, a top hit, Al Yurikusa is home and hosed with his three tops. No one will catch him if Paul Jemp can't. Hamish MacArthur, the win is gone for him. It's now just between Paul and Al. See how low, how short Al actually was. He had to jump up into that starting position, which meant this move here was a huge jump down. And uh, just to put it out there, if you want to fancy looking up the rule book, I believe for, for Al Yarakuza anyway that that is a downwards jump, which is an illegal move. Uh, yeah, I yes. I've been I've been hesitating talking about it, but because he's so short. No, I, I just had a message actually from someone who knows. <laughs> <laughs> who assured me that yes, that is a downward jump and therefore possibly yep. a, a, an illegal move. Yeah. It's there was, I was just blanky. I thought, I'll just keep quiet. Yeah, you were just testing to see if I knew the rule book or not. <laughs> yeah, for Al Yarakusa anyway, his feet were definitely above that next volume in the starting position. Obviously, everyone's feet start above there, but when they hang their legs back down to kick, you know, someone of Paul Jemp's height, his feet are relatively close to that volume in terms of height away from the mat, so you can kind of get away with it. But Al Yarakusa is definitely launching down onto that. I'm sure, the officials down the wall will be having a stern word in the ear of a couple of the root setters. Uh, sadly, I fear it's a little too late. That's nicely done for Paul. Now he gets into that groove. I'd say it's initially, I mean, there's a couple of spills in this boulder. It doesn't look massively dangerous. So I think they'll let this one go. They won't cancel the boulder. Slap of the wrists at, at, at worst here, I think. Crowd are thoroughly enjoying the boulder as well. Yeah, well, yeah, I was about to say that's the thing, but actually the rules are the thing. <laughs> Yeah, that roll came in after some absolutely spectacular and horrendous downward jumps. Remember Jackie got off set one in Slovenia many moons ago where he just basically splatted into the wall uh, on the opposite side to a 180 spin in the air and splat into the wall on the opposite side. It was absolutely horrendous. Remember some classic footage of Anna Storr doing it and then turning to look at the root setters shaking her head saying, what on earth are you doing? trying to total all the competitors. Here goes Paul. Remember, if he can't do this boulder, it needs a top, then Al Yarakusa, what are we, halfway through this last uh, third boulder, is, is done. He is the champion. not finding that foot land position quite right. Interesting if there's an appeal on this boulder actually. If, if, if this boulder is the deciding factor of this competition, I do wonder if anybody will appeal against that. I, um, yeah, I don't know the ins and outs of that situation as to when that appeal would have to be made. <laughs> Let's not go there now because it's a very enjoyable boulder to watch. Paul Gemt walks away empty-handed 
and hands the win to Al Yarakuza. Wow, uh, second final in a row. It's all been done, well, the win has been done uh, very early on. Alberto Hines Lopez then, currently down in fifth position, two flashes of two zones to his name so far. I think he was pretty disappointed not to top that second boulder. Gets his big swing going. So carrying a lot of momentum into that groove. Can't quite slow down the hands at the moment. Spanish team again been enjoying their competition here. They always seem to make it into the crowd shots, those boys. Alberto just making sure he gets that double foot tap. Big swing again. Trying to the triple hand movement. Alberto is starting to look really gassed on this boulder now. He's another guy whose final hasn't just hasn't really got going. You're really frustrated with this move, these sort of parkour moves, it's really annoying when you can't get it done. Does it end up dominating the boulder? There's so many attempts at this move now. Interesting, one of the Spanish team having a chat with uh, one of the IFSC delegates there. Well picked up by the camera team. wonder what Graham Eldon would have to say about this boulder. One of the IFSC technical delegates who I'm sure is watching on at home. So many passionate people working for the IFSC, always watching. Being a bit uh, a bit shorter, Alberto. He can't do what Hamish was doing and wedge himself in. His time is going to be up. Never secured the zone and absolutely put his body on the line there, Alberto in his Lopez. So uh, Ray Kawamata needs to find a top to get himself uh, anywhere near the podium. Not even in his hands. Here comes Ray. It's already been flashed by his compatriot, Al Yurikusa.
Just so, felt like he was just sussing it out that time, not really a serious attempt at it. Yeah, it wasn't a kick in the feet. In absolute maximum speed that time. So yes, there's a little bit of subtlety on the hand positions on this swim, uh, swing. We saw Alberto with the right hand underneath. There he goes, swap, swaps it to the underside. Oh, nicely across to the right arm, shaking as he hit him. So the underside of that volume, that was much better. It's a shame to see like four minutes go by with climbers trying the same move over and over again. Let's hope Ray Kawamata can get through this first move. The Japanese coaches just saying that's another gold medal in the bag. They're just trying to discuss whose bag it's going to go in. I think they're going to just share the luggage out. A few teams will have that problem in inverted commas. USA will be having uh, got a bit of silverware to get back. Ray Kawamata still can't quite find a way on this. Understandably, beginning to really feel his wrists as well there, Ray. It's like a battering coming in quick like that. Each time he just looks at his wrists as he comes off, really powering them into the groove every single time. There's still a boulder to come after this one. Oh, came close to hold it that time, Ray. One minute to go, buzzer just sounded. Ray Kawamata walks away. I just had a chat with a technical delegate who came over to give us some information about an appeal. Uh, it isn't to do with the jump. Everyone will be a sigh of relief. It was Alberto Hines Lopez. There was an appeal against his control of the zone on boulder number two, and the appeal was successful. Uh, apparently, he didn't control the zone. Um, judges what he had that they on, on reflection, they decided he hadn't. So Alberto Hines Lopez down in fifth place with just one zone. Wow, I mean... Uh Guy needs a break, doesn't he? He's uh, not really had a great day today, but then ru rules be rules, but it's more bad news on what's not been a great day for Alberto Jiménez Lopez. Uh, same could be said of Ray Karamata. Al Yurakusa, meanwhile, is absolutely crushing it. You get it? Yurakus crush. <laughs> when you oh. have to explain a joke, it's not a joke in my books. <laughs> it's a good effort. To be fair, you, know. it's a, you can't pan it and then say it was a good effort. <laughs> I was being polite. I must take your first answer. <laughs> I feel like we've done pretty well actually to minimise dad jokes. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear them. I don't know. Najimi Takeda, then, what can he take away from this final boulder? Could end up in second place, you know. He's currently in fourth. Top here will move him. It might be temporary, but it would move him into uh, second place. No shortage of gas. Well, each move looks like it's pretty much on the limit, but he's still going. This is good stuff from him. Pedaling through these top moves. Can he finish off this round on a high? Oh, no, he doesn't. 
does, it just comes off the, the mantle at the top. I wonder what he'll... <laughs> it's got to be pretty dispiriting because he put a lot of effort into pretty much all those moves. Straight back in for another go here. Jim Takeda down in fourth place at the moment. At the top here, we would fire up the leaderboard. This time into that mantle on the left arm, pushing towards the top. You can see it there, it's just an upside down scoop to finish. Got to establish a really decent balance position, looks super awkward. Can he push up into that volume? He does, gains control. Big scream from Hajimi finishes the competition with a top. Puts himself into second place with one top and, and more importantly four zones. <laughs> Got a little fist pump on the way off. That was like a video game. <laughs> that was brilliant. Would have been embarrassing if you just left him hanging. Hamish McArthur now can also get into second place, but he needs to get the zone quickly. Yeah, as it stands, Hamish is in third. Um, if you get assist one done quickly, it uh, will cement his place uh, on the podium. Yeah, top would obviously put him in a very strong position, but the zone could do it as well. Nice little left hand block crimp. Hamish looking so strong at this championships. Really in the form of his life. Hanging off that first sloper and chalking up like a proper root climber. Pulls into that mantle so strong on the right arm, straight into the left hand mantle. This is looking really good if here. Hamish can just wiggle that foot into a slightly better position. Hamish McCarthy easily looking for a top here. Looks like he's just going to crimp the top of that volume. He hasn't quite found the right spot. He's really tall in that space. It's going to be an awkward little match here to finish. Must but be so frustrating when you're nearly on the top and can't quite do it. Hamish was good there, nice and patient, waited until he felt comfortable. Top for Hamish. Yeah, just correct me if I'm wrong, Charlie. I think that secures him the silver medal as well, just as the scores update. Uh, it does, yes, because even if Paul Jem gets it first go, he will uh, not pass Hamish due to attempts. So you're absolutely right, Mike. Superb result, not only for Aoyo Akusa from Japan securing first, but Hamish McArthur, I think he'd be very slight with that second place. So here he goes, number four, about to end his campaign uh, here in Arco. Absolutely blasting up this final boulder, Al Yarakuza here. Right, Yufei world champion. Absolutely proving it on that last boulder. Yes. Al Yarakuza gets the big up from the DJ and as well he might, no one's going to get more than two tops apart from him. He's got four. Absolutely blasted the competition away here. Two tops to finish this round from Ariyakuza. 
top the first boulder, only climbing to do so in five attempts. Two attempts on the second boulder. He's looked the absolute master of this round, our Yarakuza. Paul Jemt can make it onto the podium here. So here goes uh, Paul Jemt. Top will net him the bronze medal. And uh, even a zone will not because he's used too many attempts. So he needs it's, it's top or bust here. Really for a powerful starting position there actually up to that slot and all these guys making it look pretty easy. It proves that in the route setting game you can't just put a pile of powerful moves on because they will absolutely smash it. So, so you've already been flashed twice this boulder. Al Yarakusa and Hamish MacArthur who will take uh, two of the medals. The question is who will take the third one? Hajimi Takeda is currently there. So Paul's got the zone, but as I say, it's not enough to move him onto the podium. As with Hamish McCarthy just chalks up for this next fiberglass pinch, he's got to make this big mantle now. Goes straight into a really high left hill. That's a horrendous position. Seems to be pushing it out though as the left foot slip sticks with the mantle though. Can he keep pushing this out on the left tricep? He does straighten the arm now. You can see the strain going through that left arm. And now it's in the face. Oh, this is for a Youth World Championship medal as well, Paul Jem. That's got to be so uncomfortable sitting on your feet with him curled underneath you like that. Actually chooses to drop back down. He's tried the left heel hook, tries the right now. Wants to be careful, he doesn't kick his right arm out the way. And Paul Jemf with a medal up for grabs just could not find a way. We saw Hamish MacArthur in a similar position, couldn't find a way. And uh, Hamish did manage to sort it out. Paul does not. Absolutely desperate to watch there for Paul. He's going to run down the clock now, try and find one further big go. And he is a big guy as well. And that mantle just looks super uncomfortable. There's the clock, just one minute to go. see how hard he's breathing just trying to get everything back maybe he'll run it down to 30 seconds left all or nothing now for a World Cup bronze medal here for Paul Jempt so Paul Jempt as you would expect gets a lot of support here he can win a medal if he can find a top. It would be two tops and four zones. It'd be enough to get him on the podium. If he can't get this boulder done, he will not get a medal. This is absolutely nail-biting stuff. And Paul Jem falls, looks at the clock, and it slips out of his fingers. Such is the... The triumph and tragedy, the highs and lows of professional sport. It was there for the taking. And he just couldn't quite do it and will finish fourth. Ultimate climber out on the final boulder, then Alberto Hines Lopez. Not his night tonight. Yeah. 
imagine this won't be the last time we'll see Alberto on a live stream of the IFSC this season. Uh, so no, I suspect not. Such as his lead climbing skills this year. I think he might always be remembered <laughs> for that uh, performance in Chamonix. It would always be something people talk about. Yeah, I think that will be remembered until he does one-ups himself with a win or another epic battle. Just trying to canvas this section. Proving he's got energy to spare. Smashes up with the right hand. I hope he can find a top after canvassing that lower section. Sometimes it up to a sloper, a canvas can be the better way because it really hangs hangs the body directly underneath the hold. Yeah. So his right hands are right over to the left side of that volume. Now he's looking tired, smile on his face. He knows this one's not gone that well tonight, but absolutely out there to give it everything. Anyway, he's down in fifth position at the moment. Yeah, and he's not going to uh, get up from fifth, regardless of whether he tops. Actually. Might end up down in sixth, but he's not going to move up the order, sadly, for Alberto. Oh, it goes nicely with one hand. Now gets the mantle on the left arm, goes for the knee. Left knee's on board. Can he find a position to somehow match this top hold? Just leans into that Gaston. It's not pretty, but it's working. He's shaking. He's trying everything he's got here. Alberto in his Lopez does find the top. It was a valiant effort, thoroughly enjoyable to watch. Not the best night for Alberto in his Lopez, but to finish the competition with a top is thoroughly enjoyable to watch. Yeah, he's uh, he's been very strong throughout this Arco World Ch Youth World Championships, just perhaps without the uh, the result he really deserves. I think is he saying there might be a bit of blood on the boulder? Yeah, I think it might be his actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. But a bit of my blood on there, he's saying. Yeah, sorry lads, I'm off. There's a bit of blood over there. You might want to sort that out. One climber left. I feel they'll just rub a bit of chalk into it and push on. So Ray Kawamata came into this final the favourite to win it. It has not happened for him at all. Can he finish with the top here? You kind of feel that it, it would be nice. But uh, he's got to earn it, of course. It won't come for free. Ray Kawamata needs to get himself set slightly unusual topping position but he does it Ray Kawamata finds the top a disappointing day really for him let's be honest but at least he finishes it well I don't get the impression it's a huge consolation to him so we'll just have the results confirmed in just a second Ray Kawamata not impressed. And there's the scene backstage. It's all glamour in climbing, isn't it? Chuck your bag over your shoulder, walk off to the podium. <laughs> Cross the car park. <laughs> oh, it's been a superb Youth World Championships. Massive congratulations to the organisers and organisers of the IFC root setters. It's been absolutely brilliant to watch. Yeah, it's been excellent. And that is the uh, final result of the final final on the final day of the <laughs> final action in August. Our Yarakusa takes four tops. Hamish MacArthur comes in second with two tops and four zones. One top and four zones. Hajimi Takeda, who takes the bronze medal. Paul Jemt almost took that bronze, couldn't quite find it. Ray Kawamata ends up fifth. And Alberto Hines-Lopez 
down in sixth. Uh, so that is it from Mike and I. Uh, you have got a lifetime's worth of IFSC YouTube replays to watch, uh, climbing fans out there. So enjoy them. It's been a fabulous month uh, here in Japan. Thank you, Mike. That's been thoroughly enjoyable. It's been a lot of days, but when you're watching action such as this and in areas such as Japan and Arco, you really can't complain. It's been absolutely brilliant. No, it's been fantastic. And thank you very much at home for watching. And the next time we're in IFSC action is the last weekend in September, the legendary hall in Cran for the next Lead World Cup. Do look forward to speaking to you then. And thank you for your company over the past few weeks. Right, and now here we are. I'm going to announce the ranking for the male UK category combined. Uh, third place, uh, bronze medalist, we will have Alberto Ginez Lopez from Spain. So please go to the stage. At second place, from Japan, we have Aime Takeda and uh, World Cup, uh, World Championship winner for combined results representing Japan, Ao Yarikusa. We will start uh, with the ceremony award right now. So please uh, come to the stage.
like we are waiting for the ceremony. So I see Christo Villot running, which means that everything is getting ready, and we will start in a minute. We are ready and uh, we will start in a minute with the ceremony award uh, for the junior female and uh, youth A male category and uh, even the combined ceremony award. All right, I'm looking for the police, so I need uh, Aime Takeda, Emish MacArthur, Pao Yurikusa, and uh, Alberto Guinness Lopez for the youth A male category. And then uh, I need uh, for the female junior category, Lucia Dorfel, Natalia Grossman, Laura Rogora. All right, we're ready to start. Signori, la cerimonia di premiazione per il campionato del mondo giovanile 2019, categoria Junior Female Boulder. Please welcome the medalist. Diamo il benvenuto al medagliere.
silver medalist representing United States medaglia d'argento rappresentante degli United States Natalia Grossman del mondo 2019 per la categoria junior female combined rappresentante l'italia laura rogora Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the national team of Italy. Signore e signori, alziamoci in piedi per l'inno nazionale italiano. The World Championships medalist, signore e signori, il medagliere del campionato del mondo.
so we will have uh, a combined. So you want to order right now? and gentlemen, uh, the victory ceremony for the World Youth Championship category, junior, female, combined. Signore e signori, la cerimonia di premiazione per il campionato del mondo giovanile, categoria, junior, female, combined. Diamo il benvenuto al medagliere. Please welcome the medalist.
ladies and gentlemen, the World Championships medalist. Signore e signori, medagliere del campionato del mondo. going on the ceremony award for the youth A male and uh, combined. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the victory ceremony for the World Youth Championships 2019 category Youth A male Boulder. Signore e signori, la cerimonia di premiazione per il campionato del mondo giovanile 2019 categoria Youth A male Boulder. Please welcome the medalist. Diamo il benvenuto al medagliere. The medals and trophy will be presented by the medaglie e trofei saranno consegnati da Marco Maria Scolaris, president of International Federation of Sport Climbing and Maria Luisa Tavernini, Councillor of Sport for the City of Arco and Davide Battistella, President of Federazione Arrampicata Sportiva Italiana. Bronze Medalist representing Japan, medaglia di bronzo, rappresentante del Giappone, Aime Takeda Silver medalist representing Great Britain, medaglia d'argento rappresentante della Gran Bretagna, Hamish MacArthur.
rise for the national anthem of Japan. Signore e signori, alziamoci in piedi per l'inno nazionale giapponese. Ladies and gentlemen, the World Championships medalist, signore e signori, il medaglie del campionato del mondo. Gentlemen, the victory ceremony for the World Youth Championships 2019 category Youth A Male Combined. Signore e signori, la cerimonia di premiazione è il campionato del mondo giovanile 2019 categoria Youth A Male Combined. Please welcome the medalist. 